Hi, this is Maggie. I wanted to talk more about the eclipses from the Saurus family of eclipses. Um, I did cover 2020, and especially I went over the December 26, 2019 annual solar eclipse. But I would like to cover the rest of the eclipses, especially the upcoming ones, you know, in January 6, 2019. We have a partial solar eclipse and a new moon in Capricorn. 15 degrees Capricorn. Um, it'll be about 1.42 p.m., you know, depending on your time zone. But I'm just going to take a look at the chart. <coughs> and I may do, I may take a look at these, these eclipses individually because it's easier to look at the chart that way. So I'm going to start with the solar eclipse and then I'll, I'll go on to the lunar eclipses in, in probably a separate one. So let's pull up the chart. So it's, yeah, it's uh, powerhouse, powerhouse day. And the new moon in uh, Capricorn, I'm, the new moon in anywhere usually signifies new beginnings. And the full moon is the culmination, you know, the ending, ending, endings. Um, but with an eclipse in the mix, you know, it could be sudden, unexpected events, and it's, it could be something ending or something beginning or something just suddenly happening, or um, especially involving solar, a partial solar eclipse. It stays with us a lot longer, uh, you know, about six months, be feeling the energy of this one. So it's powerful for Capricorn and Capricorn rules the midheaven. Saturn rules Capricorn. So it's got the sun and moon conjunct, you know, coupled together in, in Capricorn. Pluto has been transiting Capricorn. So it's, it's just, it's ending, you know, it's, it's just transforming everything, you know. So here's Saturn. He's trying to build all these structures and you know, put things in order and put things back together and Pluto's, you know, ending things and tearing them down and and then the the the, <laughs> the new moon, you know, wants new beginnings. But Pluto looks to be, me to be right on the south node in um <clears throat> In a, it's almost swallowing up Pluto in the south node in Capricorn. So there's going to be a lot more endings. Um, there's going to be events, you know, certainly in government, individual lives, especially Capricorn. Um, the opposition would be Cancer. So the advice to Cancer, Cancers have done really, really well for the few I know, you know, they've relocated, they've started a new career, and, you know, they're doing great. But with all these powerhouse planets opposing cancer, they really need to, you know, nurture themselves so they don't get, like, overpowered by all this strong energy and maybe become work workaholics in their new job. Um, and Aries, too. Aries and Sag. I mean, everyone is going to be, and all the angles especially, because <clears throat> this is the cardinal angles. You know, it's going to affect the card cardinal angles are Aries, which will be squaring. It'll be squaring this whole, I almost called it a mess, hot mess. <laughs> Let's be nice to the planets. Um, yeah, so anyway, it'll be square, Aries will be squaring, and it has been ongoing, causing some tension, you know, causing a lot of tension, actually. You, you could see it played out globally, and, you know, um, people fighting for their rights and civil rights and all, all, a lot of stuff. Um, but as for Aries, they would be, you know, they would be in individuating because their ruling ruling planet Mars it is in Aries. So that would empower them. And they're working their their asses off right now. They really are working hard because they're feeling this pressure to get things done. And they're almost becoming like workaholics because everything for them is up in the midheaven. And their midheaven is 
Capricorn, the one loaded with, you know, five planets. Yeah, Sun, Saturn, the ruler, the new moon, um, Pluto, and, and the south node. So it's just adding an urgency. You know, I think Aries is feeling a sense of urgency to get it done, to, to individuate and get, get it done, whatever, whatever they're working on. And it really seems to me like the old guard is coming down and the, and the new, you know, especially with Uranus, you know, retrograding back into Aries, like the new, the new guard is coming in. And, you know, that could be, you know, people learning to, to, you know, the whole social, the whole order of things is not as it seems. Um, Neptune is squaring, sorry, Neptune is, Neptune is in sextile to, um, it gets along. It's, 60 degree aspect, so it's harmonious flowing aspect. So Neptune is in Pisces, the planet of idealism, spirituality, you know, illusion, um, service, and it's sextiling everything in Capricorn. So, um, yeah, that's an easy harmonious aspect. But it's and it's <clears throat> setting off the card. All the cardinal squares, you know, are feeling it. So. Aries is definitely feeling it with the ruler. It's putting extra stress on your shoulders. And already, you know, with Saturn up in the midheaven, it's like, get to work, get to work, you know. All work and no play make Jack a dull boy. <laughs> but you feel driven. You have this sense of urgency driven to, to work because that's what all these planets in Capricorn are pretty much telling you to do. And basically you kind of feel like if you don't get it together now, um, you know, you might lose this opportunity because this conglomerate may not happen again for, you know, for years and years and years. Um, Ju Lucky Jupiter in, in, in um, Sagittarius is squaring Neptune. So that could be going to excess. Jupiter definitely goes to excess. It's very happy. It's the ruler of um, both, actually both Pisces and Sagittarius. So, you know, that would be traveling, um, foreign culture, you know, higher law, higher learning, wisdom. It is squaring Neptune the, the, um, in Pisces. So they can both go to excess. Jupiter is co-ruler along with Neptune and Pisces. So, you know, I would be aware of the tendency to, to over... It, over in over idealize something you know maybe over idealize your finances and go on this massive uh, shopping spree that maybe you can't afford and <clears throat> the reality won't set in until much later and you know it could hit you hard um, or beware of um, you know your intake you know may maybe an accidental overdose I know I, I'm kind of talking about that a lot but there have been a lot, you know, of, of very well-loved and well-known ce celebrities that have overdosed on, on. Everything is laced with fentanyl now. And so you just really, with this combination, you know, you just, you just really need to be careful of what you ingest, you know. And one of the things that Sagittarius can get is gout because they love to eat, drink, and be, be merry. But anyway, it's, it's um, yeah, Jupiter in Sagittarius is, is feeling really, really, it's their Jupiter return. Venus is still in um, Scorpio, so it's just, just on the edge. <clears throat> it's um, 28 degrees Scorpio, so the last few degrees, it's like re you're really feeling, feeling it a lot more. So all this Sagittarian energy, it's like, I'm not really feeling it as much as I usually do. I kind of feel like, almost like, we're kind of being gypped out of some of the Sag energy because of all this Capricorn stuff. It's really taking center stage. And I feel like it's kind of taking away from 
um, Sagittarius. It, it just seems like a very short Sagittarian period to me because all the emphasis and the eclipses and the new moons and the, you know, the full moons are, are in Capricorn. <coughs> and, um, you know, Venus has been in Scorpio retrograding back and forth for a long, long time. So, and, you know, with Neptune in, in, in the Pisces, you know, there's still a lot of people who are very, very, very emotional. And, you know, d during full moons especially, people get emotional because you know, the sub subconscious comes out and you're kind of like showing it to other people. So, um, so this eclipse... It's very powerful. Um, yeah, just, you know, it could signify endings, new beginnings, um, you know, fall for power. Yep, you know, with Pluto, Pluto, there's been a lot of people falling from power. Um, could be a death, could be uh, misuse of authority, um, and, you know, on your personal life, you know, like if, if you're a Capricorn, um, you may just be on the other side of all the changes or, you know, it's going to be ongoing until Pluto leaves your, your house, you know, and it's kind of like a Saturn return for you. So Saturn hangs around like two and a half years. So it's, it's, it's not quite done with you yet, but it's helping you to rebuild, you know, what Saturn is, I mean, what Pluto has been has been tearing down, and and, and I'm very sorry um, if if somebody uh, somebody's father died, you know, for the loss of your father, or maybe your loved one, you know, that could be very, very, very hard, especially around the holidays. Um, yeah, because I've been through that, and it, it's the hardest. The first two years are really the hardest. So, um, yeah, my my condolences for that. Um, but you can expect events to happen, um, especially, you know, on, on, in the world, as well as maybe, you know, in your personal life. Um, so that's about it. Um, anyway, I'm going to just get to the other eclipses. I hope you enjoyed this. If you do, please like, subscribe, share, and I do appreciate you. All right. Thank you.